Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This has been a long requested update of a tutorial I did, oh, probably beginning of the year or last year. Uh, and it was the hover transition uh, for like your portfolio where you wanted to do this kind of scrolling effect uh, for these really long images. And Bricks made some major changes to the builder and to the section and block and div and container and all that stuff. And that old tutorial is no longer viable. So we got a new one for you. Uh, so we're going to look at how to build this and we're gonna dive right in. All right, let's get started. Okay, we are inside the builder now. And first things first, let's go over the structure. It's a really simple structure here. We have a section, a container, a block and inside that block we have an image and an icon so rebuild this and add your classes uh, the class naming convention is hover dash image and this is going to be a bim naming convention so the top section hover dash image this container is going to be a grid and that's hover dash image underscore underscore grid next one underscore underscore image dash wrap Next one, underscore, underscore, image. And you got it, underscore, underscore, icon for the icon. There's not a ton of custom CSS, so uh, what CSS we do have, I'm gonna go over last. But now we're gonna jump into the styles and it's all done with the builder except for the pulsing icon here that kind of pulses and has a, an opacity animation. That's all the custom CSS there is. So starting on the section, I don't believe there are any styles. We're gonna use advanced themer style overview to just to have a better look at it. And there are no styles except for the custom CSS on the section, on the grid. There are very minimal styles. We're gonna have a display grid, a grid gap of three rim, and a grid template columns on the desktop of one FR, one FR, and then you can make this uh, responsive on your own. Down at the mobile, I just turned it into a two column grid. Uh, without advanced themer, it's all done here just in the content tab, display grid, three rim, one FR, one FR, one FR. And that's what that should look like. Um, under the layout, so if you go to style and then layout, there's no changes to the positioning on this container. Uh, so it's just default. Jumping down to the image wrapper, we're getting a little bit more uh, involved on our CSS. Uh, the position is relative and this is very important. So we need to make sure that the image and icon wrapper position is relative and that's gonna affect the icon more because we're gonna absolute position that icon inside of this wrapper. So that's the only style there, but it's really important. So to get there, you go to the style tab, layout, scroll down, positioning, set that to relative. All right, moving on to the image. There's a lot of styles on the image. I'm gonna just start at the content uh, tab here. Pick your image and you want a tall image. So mine is uh, a home page I built uh, for a law firm design. And this is a full setting and it's uh, 2560 pixels tall. So it's a pretty tall image and you want a tall one so that this scroll effect will have plenty of time to get to the bottom. Um, if you have a, a really short image, it, it'll still work, but it's not gonna, it's gonna get to the bottom really quickly. So you have to make sure that your images are tall enough. Anyways, down here under the object fit, we're gonna set to cover. Object position, we're gonna set to zero, zero. And what that means is uh, when this is in its natural standard state, meaning you haven't hovered it, you hadn't done anything, the position of this image, uh, which is much bigger than what we've defined it to be, which is its height is gonna be starting at zero, zero. Um, let's look at the style overview. I added some border radius of 10. 
So let's go look at that. So under the content, uh, sorry, under the style tab. So if you go to style and then border box shadow under the border, I set a border radius of 10. Under the filters and transitions, this is important to tell it uh, how we want to transition from the standard state or unhovered state into its hovered state. So you're going to type object dash position, four seconds, ease in and out. And you can do just ease. You could do two seconds or whatever. You could do all here, but since we're only animating the object position of this image from top to bottom, uh, I'm only going to transition the object position. Um, it's just generally more uh, better performance if you don't try to animate all kinds of stuff on your image. You could use all. It's no problem. It's not going to cause any issues. But since we're only doing object position, that's all I'm going to tell it to translate uh, on the transition. Um, layout. This is really important. Height 475. And then the position is static, which is just the default. So, uh, really, if I was going to do this quickly, I would come in here and do it just like this. Set my image, set it to full, set this to cover, zero, zero. Hop on over to the uh, layout, come down 475. You could do 600. It's just going to make it taller. Um, I like 475. That's what I'm going to stick with. Head over to border and box shadow, style, border back, box shadow, 10 all the way across, and then filters and transitions, object position, four seconds, ease in and out, just like that. Okay, that's for the unhovered state. Now we need to jump into our hover state. So if you click the hover icon, you'll see these are a bunch of advanced themer icons here. Um, but with just standard bricks, just you'll see a hover icon at the top that looks like this. Click it. And then we're going to go into our uh, content tab and change the object position to 0, 100%. That means when it's hovered, we want the position of this image to be 100% at the bottom. Um, if you did 50, it would stop in the middle, uh, but we want it to go all the way to the bottom, so 100. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're, we're transitioning from 0 to 100. And this is, if you were to hover it, I think it would probably start at 10 and then go to 100, but we just want it to start at 0 under the hover state as well. So unhovered. Zero, 0, under hover, we're going to go zero, 100. And that's really it on that uh, styling for the image. There's a lot there. Let's double check our style overview real quick, make sure we're not missing anything. We got our border radius, our height 475, object fit cover, object position zero, 0, and then our transition, which was four seconds, ease in and out on the object, targeting the object position. Okay, icon. There's not a ton going on here on the icon, but what you need to know is setting the font size to 60 and then using a square icon. So let's look at that real quick. So icon, I'm gonna use Themify because Font Awesome sometimes is not square and the Themify icons are square, so that makes things a lot easier for us if we can get a square icon. So Themify, and then I'm using this kind of arrow circle down. Um, and then I'm going to set that to 60. That means it's going to be 60 by 60. And this having these values uh, will help us here in a second. So let's hop over to the style and the layout. We're going to come back to the margin in just a second. But we're going to say, I want to absolute position this. If we do relative, that's not, not correct. If we do static, it's going to be right at the beginning of this column here. And we don't want that. We want absolute position. So we're going to absolute position this relative to the wrapper. 
meaning we're going to define exactly where we want this icon to be. And then the parent was set to relative so that we can position this absolute inside it. So if we were to hop back up to our wrapper and set that to anything other than relative, like static, you'll see it's going to jump out. So the parent wrapper needs to be absolute, uh, sorry, relative, <laughs> relative. The parent wrapper needs to be relative and the icon is going to be absolute positioned to the uh, parent wrapper. Then we're going to do top 50% and left 50%. And then if you'll notice this negative 30, that's half of how big we defined our icon to be. So if you take that away, you'll notice it kind of jumps over a little bit. And that's because the element is being positioned exactly in the middle, but at the start. So this little edge here is right in the middle, but we want the middle of the icon to be in the middle. So we can just do move it over by one half of its width, which is 30. The other way to do it is to come into a calc function on the left where we'll say calc open parentheses 50% minus 30 pixels. And that should pop it into the center as well. But as you can probably see, to me, this is just cleaner. Give it a negative margin of 30, you know, whatever you want. Uh, if you don't like messing with negative margins, I know a lot of people don't, uh, you can run a calc. But if you start to look at this on different viewports, um, like this one on our mobile, it's exactly in the middle no matter what. So if I go back to my grid and make this a one column grid, that icon is just going to stay right in the middle because we told it to be. And it's going to, as the wrapper grows, it's going to always just be 50% minus 30 pixels. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little tricky, uh, but that's really all that's going on there uh, for the icon. So let's look at it one more time. Font size is 60, left under our absolute positioning, left 50%, margin left uh, 30 pixels. Ooh, yeah, we need to talk about pointer events. Uh, top 50%. Uh, really position absolute is the most important here. Let's talk about pointer events. So on the front end here, if I hover over this, it keeps doing the animation. That's because I'm saying pointer events are none. Don't interact with the mouse or the pointer when you hover over the icon. So if we turn that off, pointer events, just remove that there. Now what happens is when your mouse hits that icon, it starts the animation, we hit the icon, and it's like, oh, well, I'm not hovered over my image anymore because my pointer is interacting with that uh, icon there. So you say pointer events none on the icon, and that will fix that little issue there. Pretty cool. So let's look at how to make the icon hover and grow, or pulse and grow like that. So I like to put all my custom CSS on the section. Uh, it just makes it easier. You could put it on a class where you have your animations and then call that class wherever you want. But for this component here, I put it on the section and I always standardize that way. I know just to go to my section to grab any custom CSS. Um, sometimes I will uh, store this CSS in the global style sheet in the child theme. You can store it wherever you want, uh, but for this example, store it on the section. Uh, one thing to note when you're working with keyframes, Bricks already has a bunch of defined keyframes. So this animation is called icon-pulse. And if you don't know what keyframes are, do a little research on what they are. And it's really not too, too hard to understand, but Bricks calls one of their animations pulse. So if you try to define pulse, Bricks is going to take over um, and it's not going to work. So all these settings are already predefined by Bricks. So you kind of have to name yours icon pulse or my pulse, whatever you want. And what a keyframe real quickly is, is you're saying, hey, I want to make an animation that starts at 0% and goes up to 100% or a round trip 
from zero all the way to 100% of the animation. We're gonna scale this icon starting at one and at 50% of the animation, we're gonna say it's gonna grow to 1.3. So scale it a little bit larger as you can see here, it's pulsing. And then we're also going to set the uh, opacity to 0.5. And then when we get to the end of the uh, round trip here, 100%, we're going to scale it back to one. And the round trip of this uh, icon pulse animation is two seconds. So it's going to take two seconds to go from zero to 100 um, and then back. And you can kind of watch it and count two seconds and you'll see that, you know, it kind of does that uh, animation there. And that's what the keyframe does. So how you apply your animation that we named Icon Pulse is you come down and uh, target a selector. In this one, it's going to be the hover dash image underscore underscore icon. So we're going to apply this animation to the icon. Pretty easy. Nothing crazy. You could put it on the icon, but again, I like to keep it on the section. So uh, that root selector is just saying, hey, whatever the name of this root of the selector is, we're just gonna call that with root. Um, but really what's happening is it's hover dash image underscore underscore icon and Brix is gonna change this back as soon as I click save, but that's what it's doing. So that's the pulse animation. Let's say you didn't want it to pulse. Let's say I'm going to copy this um, to a WordPad really quickly. Okay, I've saved off my keyframe animation on a notepad, not a WordPad, uh, for use later. And what we're going to do now is instead of that animation, we're going to do a hover. Uh, when I hover this image wrapper, I want this icon to rotate and disappear. So that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, there's several different ways you could do that, but I'm going to do it with as little custom CSS as possible and try to get all of the other styles in the builder. So let's do it. So I'm going to have my hover image class, which is on my section. I'm going to go into my style tab. So click style. Scroll down to CSS and then we'll write it out. So dot hover dash image underscore underscore IMG dash wrap. That's what we named this image wrapper over here. Colon hover space dot hover dash image underscore underscore icon. Open and close brackets. So anytime we hover, the image wrapper, we're going to apply some styles to the icon. So we're going to, uh, let's see, opacity zero and rotate 180 degrees. That's it. So it's going to do it really quickly and you can't even see the rotate because it's going to zero opacity so fast. So let's go over to the icon, go to the style tab, go to filters and transitions, and we're going to say opacity one second, ease, comma, rotate one second, ease. That'll allow us to target not only the opacity, but the rotate properties on our transition. And there we go. Check it out on the front end. So when I hover that wrapper, it's going to rotate and go away. That's a pretty nice smooth animation there. I like it. All right, let's hop back into the builder and build out this section a little bit more. You could apply this to a query loop with some custom fields to get images, but we're just going to duplicate this a couple times and swap out the images for this one and this one right here. So now you've got a nice little 
section here to showcase your work. We did this project, we did this project, we did this project. You know, these are all uh, great ways to show off your work. And uh, I did this tutorial before Bricks changed a lot of how the section, container, block, and div elements work. So the first tutorial is obsolete. Um, I've been uh, requested to make this one time and time again. So here's a, a really easy way to do this. It, it really isn't that much uh, custom CSS or anything. The only CSS that we have is either if you wanted to do your uh, icon to rotate and disappear or the keyframe animations. You can't do both of them at the same time. Maybe somebody really, really awesome at CSS could figure out how to do it at the same time, but I found that anytime you have the pulse, it like, it like doesn't, it doesn't work right. So you, you can only do one or the other from what I've found. Uh, if anybody knows how to make both of these work, maybe with GSAP probably, but just using keyframe animations, let me know. But here's the code uh, in case you want to put it on your site. Use either this one or this one. So uh, that's the tutorial. Uh, if you find any uh, questions that you have, shoot a note over on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, if this is the type of uh, content you like, uh, please subscribe to the channel and like this video, and I will send out more stuff just like this. Uh, I hope you find this helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, again, shoot me a note. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.